In today's gospel reading, we have an account of how the townspeople of Jesus, the town where he grew up, basically reject our Lord. Now, notice when he quotes, when he uh, reads the scripture from the prophet Isaiah, he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. Well, this is a reference to the Messiah. And, of course, Christ is indicating to them that he is the Messiah. And, you know, they marvel that he speaks so graciously and, and he speaks so well. But they say, well, isn't this, isn't this Joseph's son? Don't we know him? How can he claim to be the Messiah? In other words, they don't believe in him. And then he says, you know, doubtless you will say to me, do here what you did in Capernaum. In other words, prove that you are who you claim you are. In other words, they don't believe but it's interesting, you know, imagine if we were the people that our Lord was addressing and here's our Lord that, you know, they just know him like a regular person. And he says, well, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor, etc., etc." So in other words, here's someone claiming, well, the spirit of God is upon me. He's sending me to do good works. And so you better listen to me. That's the kind of message that they're receiving. And of course, they don't want to accept that. They don't want to listen to him. They don't want to trust him. And the reality is that, yes, our, our Lord was speaking the truth. The Spirit of God was upon him, and he is the Messiah, and he is bringing good news to, to the poor and, and release to the captives and sight to the blind and, and so on and, and so on. But, but I think it's, it's good for us to, to keep in mind that if anyone other than our Lord claims that the Spirit is upon him and that we need to listen to him because the Spirit is on him, then we've got to be very, very careful. In other words, we need to look to the official teachings of the church because that's where the true spirit manifests itself and the tradition of the church also. So just something to keep in mind. But, but there's an important lesson here for all of us also is, you know, part of the problem with the, the townspeople of, of our Lord, and it's not just his own townspeople, but we could say the Jewish people as a whole, they end up rejecting our Lord. Why? Because Christ, when he comes as the Messiah, it's not what they were expecting. And notice that, so the townspeople of our Lord, they reject him. Many of the Jewish people rejected him. You know, I, I have no idea what kind of statistics, you know, what percentage of the Jewish people accepted Christ, what percentage rejected him. But I would say the majority of the Jewish people ended up rejecting Christ or not embracing Christianity. And it's not only Christ whom they rejected, but also the prophets that came before. So the prophets also were, were anointed by God and um, the people didn't want to listen to them. And it's the same today. People don't want to listen to God. They don't want to listen to the message of God. They don't want to hear the good news. They want to put their hope for happiness in other things apart from the gospel message of Christ. And this is very, very unfortunate. And it's all the more reason why you and I, that, that we should speak out and proclaim the good news because hopefully some, maybe even a small percentage, at least some will listen to the message of salvation. So, you know, you and I were kind of like Christ went in his hometown being rejected. Well, people that we know, they're not going to listen to us because, oh, well, I know you. I know you didn't have an entirely holy past. Maybe you did some things when you were young. Why should I listen to you? So we have to try to convince them. So we have to try to give good reasons. But you see, when we, when we are part of a religion, there's this tendency just to become used to things and our expectations, they can change. So for example, newer converts, for them, everything is marvelous. Everything is miraculous. Whereas for us, it just becomes kind of ordinary. You know, there's that saying that familiarity breeds contempt. So the townspeople of our Lord rejected him. They were familiar with him. They had a kind of contempt for him. In other words, they didn't believe that he could be someone other than what they thought he was. And 
when when we just kind of get used to things, when we just go through the motions, when we don't know our faith well enough, when we don't reflect enough on the supernatural, what can easily happen is that we end up like the majority of Catholics today who no longer go to church, who no longer believe in our Lord's true presence in the Eucharist, who claim, oh, well, if you are the true church, well, let, let's see the miracles, let's see the, the wonders, right? I mean, they're there, the wonders are there, the apparitions of Our Lady, we got the great saints, St. Teresa of Avila, St. Therese of Lisieux, um, Mother Teresa of Calcutta, and we have tons and tons of miracles, including Eucharistic miracles. It's all there, but they don't believe it. It's kind of like, well, let's see you do a miracle right now, and, and if you can't produce a miracle instantaneously, they just reject you. So very similar kind of circumstances today to the time of our Lord. And, and basically, you and I, we're called to, to appreciate our faith more fully, to appreciate what we have more fully, but we are also called to imitate Christ in proclaiming the good news, the message of salvation. In other words, to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. So those of us who truly live our faith, we would say that having our faith has brought tremendous good into our lives. It's kind of hard to imagine living without faith. Like, what would be your goals? What would be your aspirations? Imagine not believing in life after death and realizing, okay, well, maybe I'm not as healthy as I would like to be. Maybe I'm not as wealthy or as good looking or as popular or talented. Then I'm kind of doomed for failure. Like, what, what hope would I have, right? So we need to appreciate and reflect on all that Christ has done for us, all that God has done for us, and to truly, to truly give thanks, but also to, in our appreciation of it, ideally to be filled with joy because the message of salvation is good news. It's joyful news. It's, it's news that can make us happy. So we need to share this joy, this good news with those around us.